It's the March 2024 show with Amber from Simco Optometrics. And March is glaucoma month. Am I right on this? You gotta you gotta yeah, keep close. Me. Yeah. Um, okay. so March March 10th to 16th is World Glaucoma Awareness Week. Uh, for the folks that don't know what glaucoma is, can you explain that? Yeah, sure. Uh, so glaucoma is a group of eye diseases that mainly attacks the health of your optic nerve, which you can think of as the wire that connects your eye back to your brain. Uh, it's the trickiest thing with glaucoma is that it's it's virtually symptomless for the first 90 percent um, of the time that you have the disease. Most of the vision loss occurs in very advanced glaucoma. And so Dete early detection and early treatment are your best defense against glaucoma. So it's it's something that I see on a regular basis in my practice. And almost always when I'm diagnosing glaucoma, it's in somebody that has no symptoms whatsoever. They've just come in for their regular eye exam or maybe they'd like some new glasses. Um, but it's something that we detect on a fairly regular basis. So it is, it is something that uh, is important to me. And I think getting information out there about early detection and treatment of glaucoma, um, it's, it's just really important. And so I think this World Glaucoma Week, it's a great time for us to chat a little bit about, about glaucoma and making sure people are going and having regular eye exams every, every couple of years. So when you look at someone's eye and you see, what do you see for symptoms that it's starting? Because I might not know I have it. Like you said, what, what's the trigger points? What do you go, oh, you know, what, what's, what raises your red flags? So one of the cool things on an eye exam is that I can actually look through your pupil and see the tissues at the back of your eyes. I can see blood pumping through the blood vessels. Uh, I can see the nerve fibers that make up your optic nerve, right where the nerve plugs into the back of the eye. So we start to see some early changes in the nerve that kind of indicate that there's been some damage. Some of the nerve tissue is dying off. Um, a lot of times when people think of glaucoma, they think of eye pressure and the pressure being too high. Uh, so we'll We'll check your eye pressure, see how it compares to what your eye pressure has been in the past. Uh, there's quite a few glaucomas that do occur even with low or normal eye pressure, but uh, eye pressure is still something we manage. And then we do test your peripheral vision. In glaucoma, the earliest vision loss is, is a loss of peripheral vision um, and not you know far out to the side peripheral vision, but sort of vision in the in-between area, about 20 degrees outside of where you're looking. Uh, and it, it fades really slowly. And our brain does a good job of filling in what we're missing. So it's it's amazing how much peripheral vision you can lose. And because it happens so gradually, um, and it doesn't go black or fade away, you just lose resolution, basically. Um, and our resolution isn't great to begin with. So um, most people that have glaucoma that do have vision loss don't even notice that they're that they're missing anything. Would you, like when you were talking about that, would you notice it more though, if you're like driving at night? Like, would that be uh, an indicator? Might, yeah. Yes, yep. Because we use in the dark, we don't use our straight ahead vision. We use some of our peripheral vision. Um, you can notice more trouble in dim lighting, um, more trouble trying to read fine print. So uh, something like newsprint, maybe where, you know, it's not real high contrast. Um, but it, it, it tends to be pretty elusive. And there are lots of things that cause trouble driving at night, uh, early cataracts yeah. or just just age. <laughs> so, yeah. What, what, what do they do? How, how, what's a glaucoma treatment like then? I mean, I don't know if that's in your realm, but what, what would happen if you were diagnosed and you have to have this? Can you fix it, I guess? So, so yes, optometrists can treat glaucoma uh, in Ontario. Uh, the mainstay of treatment is usually eye drops that lower the pressure inside the eye. Uh, so if we can lower the pressure, it just improves blood flow to the nerve at the back of the eye and slows down the damage. Uh, but glaucoma can't be cured and it definitely can't be reversed, but you can slow it down. And the, the goal is to slow it down to a slow crawl that it never really advances to something that you'll notice. Um, there are some surgeries or laser treatments that get done. And then we also manage lifestyle factors like keeping your blood pressure in a normal range. Um, you know, keep making sure that um, you're getting a moderate amount of exercise and that some of you know, your other systemic health conditions are well managed as well. Well, yeah, obviously it's a much needed week that you guys have in there to talk about it because I didn't realize how many uh, roadblocks were in the way and how many things can happen with that. I just assumed glaucoma was something you could fix, but that now, now I understand what's going on there.
I want to ask you something a little deeper too, and we don't really touch on this very often, but I had a, a family member on my wife's side in England who was recently diagnosed with eye cancer and she has to have her eye removed. I didn't, like, I was like, wow, I didn't ever really think about it. And I mean, to, to your knowledge, I mean, this is like you said, when you can find glaucoma, I'm sure you guys can go into an eye and see when other factors like this may be happening as well. Is that something you guys do? And is eye cancer on the rise? Is it something that we need more awareness of? Well, I'm really, I'm really sorry to hear about your relative, Dave. It sounds like she's getting some good care. And um, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes um, in order to get rid of the cancer and physically remove it, um, sometimes the eye has to come come with it. But uh, that's that can be a real important step in keeping it from spreading. Uh, yeah, there. I mean, there are, there are quite a few different types of cancer that can show up in and around the eye. Um, you're right, those things uh, can be detected on a just a routine eye exam. Part of your eye exam always includes an eye health component, you know, when the optometrist comes in and blinds you with the, the really bright lights. Uh, we're looking at the tissues inside the eye. So uh, yeah, I'll, it doesn't happen often, but unfortunately, occasionally we do detect eye cancer inside the eye. Uh, more often than not, it, again, it's asymptomatic. People aren't having any symptoms or noticing any changes in their vision, uh, especially in the early stages. It's diagnosable and visible to me, but it won't be visible to you. Um, is so it, it's, 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 yeah, like I, I was kind of thrown for a loop when I, when I heard it, and that's why I wanted to make sure I talked to you about it today. Is there anything you can do to protect yourself from getting eye cancer? Like, is there, is there things that you can recommend? I, I definitely would recommend that people wear people wear sunglasses. So UV protection is something that uh, we all know is important. We think of things like cataracts, um, but it's skin cancers in and around the eyelid, cancers on the surface of the eye, um, and some internal eye cancers as well um, is associated with uh, exposure to UV radiation. So you know, anytime you're outside, um, 365 days of the year, uh, even when it's overcast. Uh, winter, a good time to wear sunglasses as well. Just making sure that you're keeping your eyes protected. Uh, your eyes, you know, they're a part of your body. So things that keep the rest of your body healthy, like um, having a good diet, eating eating healthy, eating dark leafy greens, getting enough vitamin A and vitamin C, um, not smoking, getting a moderate amount of exercise, managing your stress, getting good sleep, making sure your blood pressure is, is well managed, making sure your blood sugar is well managed. All of these things go along with keeping your, your eyes healthy and certain forms of, of eye cancer as well. Uh, if you've got a strong family history of, of eye cancer or glaucoma as well, then your risk is a little bit higher. Uh, some of those things are not you know non-modifiable risk factors, risk factors that you can't control as we get older, our risk goes up. Um, the key is really early detection and early treatment and intervention. So I can't stress enough coming in and having those regular visits, even when everything feels fine, even when it feels like you were just here a year ago, um, those visits are really crucial for your eye health. What, I mean, it visits like what, 30 minutes, really? Like you're, you're not in the chair that long. It depends, yeah, anywhere from, some people that I see more frequently, sometimes they're here less than 20 minutes. Uh, sometimes the visit, you know, I would I would budget an hour from the time you check in to the time you leave. It's usually quite a bit less than that. You're right, the, somewhere between 25 and 35 minutes. But um, we usually run on time 95% of the time, but you never know. So you're coming over a, your lunch hour or something. I, if you budgeted an hour, you'd be out to the parking lot and, and gone. So an hour out of your life once a year is yeah. well worth it. It's amazing because I don't think when you go in, you know, obviously when you go in to get your eyes checked, you'll be like, oh, I, you know, my vision's not right. I need my glasses, my prescription, blah, blah, blah. But I, I never really realized until we started having these conversations how much other stuff is going on in that that checkup. Like, you know, yeah. like you said, there's so we don't realize what else you guys are looking for in there just to make sure everything's safe and sound. And I do agree with you 100 percent. The diet, the exercise, the sleep, the stress all factors in any part of our body in our lives that's you know and your eyes are critical right i mean you you want to make sure you keep them as as fresh as you can and for as long as you can um anything else you want to add because you know maybe give the folks you know your email or uh websites so just like so get in touch with you guys like book the appointment folks don't don't leave it like i'm notorious for leaving things two and three years as you well know but it just it's it's like you said it's an hour yeah, make sure. Yep. 
Yeah, I think that's that's the key. Come in, get things checked out. Um, at your eye appointment, your optometrist will let you know how frequently you should be seen. Um, always talk to you about your your family history, your health history, um, what else might be going on with with your health, and we'll give you a good idea of how often you should be seen. You can call our office to book an appointment, uh, 426-3123, easy to remember. Uh, you can also go on our website, simcooptometrist.com, and there's a request appointment form there as well. You can reach out to us through Google or through Facebook, um, but the website or calling are probably the, the two ways we'll get back to you the quickest. And I, I, and I want to clarify something, because we this is like three months ago, we had this conversation about how they were changing up eye appointments uh, the funding was changing it in as you got older weren't the appointments sort of further apart now 18 months did that change so yes some so if you're 65 or older some people are covered every 12 months for what we would call a comprehensive eye exam um sort of like a, a routine eye physical you can think of it that way um some people are covered every 18 months uh, but there is coverage uh, in the in-between. If you do need something followed up on or your optometrist thinks that you should be seen a little more frequently, um, OHIP does have availability for what they consider a partial visit. So if we're monitoring for something like glaucoma, a lot of times your, your annual visit, um, we might stagger and just do the tests we need to do to address the glaucoma risk um, and maybe just check your eyeglass prescription every 18 months. So. Uh, Yes, there's definitely coverage there for people that need it. Um, and we do our best to make sure that people people get seen um, in a timely manner. It's You know, I know I didn't really want to bring that up, but I think it was so important that people understand that, right? Because there has been a change and it's important that, you know, you still got to don't put off seeing the eye doctor. Like you said, there's always compromises and ways to get her work through it. Uh, thanks for doing this today. Great to catch up. I know that was kind of a little bit heavy with the eye cancer thing, but I really wanted to get the gist of it because... For myself and for our viewers, we want to share that information so that you're well aware, right? These things do happen. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, nope, definitely. Um, like I said, it's it's worth coming in and getting it checked. Um, it's something that uh, is is important and you don't realize what, you know, your vision you, we take for granted. It's not until maybe we start to lose it or we, we really consider what our life would be like without our vision that... Um, it's kind of a sobering thought. So the best thing you can do, you know, eat healthy, don't smoke, uh, get a bit of exercise, but definitely call your optometrist and have those regular eye checks. Yeah, go see Amber, folks. Thanks for doing this. <laughs> Anytime, Dave.